my job to guide you to quilt and to live with confidence. And I am so excited that you're here with me tonight to talk about how to make a quilting plan. Give me just a hot second. I'm going to hop over to Facebook and I'm going to make sure that this is streaming properly so that you guys can see me. And I'm going to make sure that I can see you and all of those good things. And while I'm doing this, yes, there we are. Huzzah! While we're doing this, I am going to um, hit share on this and make sure that it heads over to the free motion or to the quilting rock stars group. Um, so if you are joining me um, and you have a guild or a page that you think would enjoy learning about quilting plans with us this evening, go ahead and hit the share button on your end too. And that way we can all enjoy this together. Hey, Jan. Hey, Terry. All right, let me toggle back over to myself so I can see you guys. How perfect. Okie dokie. I am so excited. So I'm going to go ahead and I know I've only been live for a hot second, but some of you guys have had a chance to hop on and I'm going to go ahead and pull up our, um, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Mm. Well, now it's not wanting to go. Uh oh. There it goes. Alrighty. Ha ha. Get our um, slides up here and we are going to go ahead and jump if I can find the present button. <laughs> jump in to how to make a quilting plan. All right. Now I got to get my phone open. This is so I can continue to see you guys while I'm live. And I got to make sure that it's muted. I'm still working out the kinks on this, guys. It's not super graceful yet. But we're working on it. Hello, everyone. Jan, Sue, Becky, Mary, Rita, Gina, Loretta. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm excited to jump into how to make a quilting plan. So there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing this live tonight. So if you're watching in real time, then or in the next day or so, then you know that tomorrow's the last day to sign up for our Finish the Decade Quilt Along. And one of the things I realized is that if we're finishing projects, one of the barriers to finishing projects might be the quilting itself, right? A lot of you just this last weekend graduated from Free Motion Quilting Academy with me. Many of you are already in Free Motion Quilting Academy and are still working your way through. But just because you're um, there already doesn't mean that a little bit of encouragement around the planning process of how to decide what to quilt where won't necessarily help. Um, but also for those of you that are heading into Free Motion Quilting Academy with me in January, you're already excited. Doors open January 2nd. Guys, I'm over the moon. Um, this is great preparation for you to start seeing that free motion quilting is achievable, right? And all these big question marks we have about like, well, how do I, even if I know how to like quilt different motifs, like how do I know where to quilt them? How do I make those decisions, right? That's going to be one of the things that we're talking about tonight. So I'm delighted that you're all here with me. Let's get started on how to make a quilting plan, okay? And this little mini workshop, I'm going to show you guys how to take the anxiety out of the quilting process by making a quilting plan. By the end of our time together, you'll know how to decide what kind of quilting plan is best for your quilt and how to begin choosing the motifs in order to execute that plan, all right? Now, some of you, I jumped ahead too quickly. Some of you guys will remember I've written blogs about this. I have one of those blogs linked in the caption of this video. So if you want an opportunity to actually read a lot of this written out long form that is available, I've got that link for you. And this video will actually be added to that blog, hopefully tonight. If not tonight, then definitely tomorrow, right? So these resources will continue to be available to you. Hey, Rhoda. Hey, Mitzi. Hey, Jill. I see you guys hopping on. So picture this with me, right? You have sewn your beautiful quilt top. You've finished that final seam. You press all the seams, which in and of itself is no small task, right? And you hold up that beautiful quilt top and you go, oh, right? It's like meeting a new friend for the first time, right? I'm like, how have I been working on this whole thing for like hours and hours? And yet every time there's something magical about that quilt top moment, right? But the problem is that often right after that quilt top, mountaintop moment comes this gut-wrenching, right? Of like, but now what? How do I quilt it? Especially if you consider yourself a piecer, right? Or maybe you're early in your free motion quilting journey and you have a small little toolbox of motifs and you're just still not really sure how to decide what's best for your quilt. 
I feel like this can be particularly overwhelming when you look at someone like me that I just, I'll custom quilt anything just for the fun of it, right? But that is not necessarily useful to you in real life, right? Like there's an element to which I very much live in real life, right? Like I have two little boys. You guys know the stories about my kids and my cats and the mess. Moby ran off with kale tonight. Like what cat runs off with kale, right? But there's also this element of I have this beautiful thing of quilting being my profession, my calling, the thing that I do, right? So there's an element of luxury in that if I want to custom quilt everything I can. And you could, but that may not be your choice. And so when you look at my work or the work of many other free motion quilters, it, it may be easy to be like, okay, well, I'm never going to custom quilt everything the way that they are. So I, this just isn't for me right? And either you send stuff out to the long arm or you just straight line quilt it. And maybe those things aren't really your favorite. You'd like to be able to finish your own quilts. But this like anxiety moment of how do I decide what to quilt where you find it totally crippling, right? And I want to set you free from that crippling anxiety tonight. So let's keep going. Hey, Ellen, 15 quilts basted. I'm waiting. Babe, the fact that you have them basted makes you a hero in my mind, just so you know. All right. Now imagine instead an alternate scenario. You still have that beautiful aha moment. You see your gorgeous quilt up. You're overwhelmed with joy of this thing that you've created. But instead of that anxiety, you have a plan in place of how to thoughtfully choose just the right quilting plan and just the right motifs for your quilt. And then you can begin the quilting process, not with anxiety, but with joy. This was These were words that Jan used recently as she described her experience inside Free Motion Quilting Academy, that she went from really dreading the quilting part to finding great joy in it, right? And I want that for each and every one of you. It sounds magical, right? This is the magic of a quilting plan. A quilting plan is simply deciding on paper before you begin quilting, how you will quilt or free motion quilt, because you may not decide to free motion quilt it, just bear that in mind, your top. It's an opportunity to separate the brain work of decision making from the physical work of the quilting, right? I think if you've done any quilting at all, you realize the physical nature of it, right? That's something I discuss a lot, all right? About how to hold our bodies properly so we don't injure ourselves when we're lugging these giant quilts through our machines, right? But what we may not necessarily pay enough attention to is the fact that deciding what to quilt where takes a lot of brain energy. Decisions are really hard. And I'm going to go ahead and say that if you are taking care of children or you are working a job during the day or all week and then you're quilting on the evenings or the weekends, you've already used a lot of your brain's decision making ability. And that can make this task feel even bigger. And that's why I think it's very important to create a separate step for this part of the quilting process, right? It's not piecing and quilting, right? We do have piecing, which let's be honest, also includes things like cutting and pressing, but then we have a quilting plan. It's the bridge between the joy of piecing and the joy of quilting. I mean, think about even for piecing, you wouldn't, unless you're just really into improv, right? But you wouldn't necessarily just start grabbing stuff from your stash and slashing it up and sewing it together, right? You pick a pattern, or a concept, even if you're improving, there's probably a concept you're starting with, right? Or you pick a set of materials. So you have a starting place, whether that's a pattern for you or materials for you, then you make a plan for how you're gonna begin to cut up those materials and put them together in some sort of order, right? Because we start with order, like a stack of fabric, we create disorder by chopping it all up and we put it back together into order again, right? But there's always a plan through there. We have a step-by-step -step for the piecing process of quilting. But when it comes to the quilting designers, and I'm guilty of this too, guys, if you get one of my patterns, you're going to see this sentence. Though I do hope that, you know, blog content helps alleviate some of the stress. But there's this, this horrible sentence. Quilt is desired. Even though I use it, it makes me angry. Okay. And like, I would love at some point to have in all of my patterns, like, here's some suggestions for quilting this, right? Doesn't always work out that way, but but quilt is, um, y'all know I have feels about this. If you've been around here for more than five minutes, you know I have feels about that. So let's take a moment to, to be able to dive deep into that desired, the, um, the quilting plan decision brain work, right? Let's make that its own thing so that you can piece, 
put it up on your design wall, go get your glass of wine, enjoy it. The next night we can make a quilting plan, sleep on it, and then get into the quilting and the whole thing becomes much, much more joy enjoyable, right? Now, let's make that dream a reality, right? It really can be. This is my quilting experience. This is now Jan's quilting experience. This is Lydia's quilting experience. There's a lot of women here who have gone before you and are learning in ever increasing measure, and I include myself in that, I'm constantly learning new things about quilting plans, how to make these decisions on paper strategically, which is cheaper in addition to being less stressful, right? Um, make our decisions on paper before we begin quilting. So really all you need to make a quilting plan is a pencil and some paper. I prefer graph paper because I find it easier to actually draw the quilt itself and then doodle on it, right? If you're a designer of the pattern you're working from, it comes with a coloring sheet. So like if you're working from one of my patterns, I always include a black and white coloring sheet. It's just a line drawing of the quilt. That's also for your quilting plan, right? And if you wanna color it to match your quilt, bonus points to you, but that's actually not necessary. You just need to be able to actually try out the motifs within the scale of the quilt, right? You know, Sue, let me, let's, let's pause for a moment. I'm going to be talking largely in the context of free motion quilting. This is a great point, Sue, and I'm going to talk about this again when we get to all over designs. Um, but for a lot of people, they like straight line quilting. All right. And I do not want you to feel guilty about that ever. If aesthetically that is what you want and what you like, you go girl. And if what you like is sending it out to the long armor, you go girl. Okay. Truly like, but what I want to be able to do is set you free from anxiety or guilt about just like knowing that you could be doing this thing, but you're not sure where to start. Right. And so Sue, you'll know when it's the right quilt to free motion it right? Like you'll have your moment where you're like, and this I'm going to free motion because that's how it is in my head, right? But if a lot of your quilts in your head have straight lines, go for it. That's a quilting plan. That's the decision. And you make that decision before you start, right? Okay. A quilting plan sets you free from anxiety about ruining your quilt so that you can quilt with confidence. I say it on every video, it is my job to guide you to quilt and live with confidence. And the key way that I can do that for you tonight is show you the basics of making a quilting plan and set you free again from this anxiety that comes from just not knowing what to quilt wear, right? And that is rooted in like, I just spent all these hours making this beautiful thing and I don't wanna wreck it, right? I don't want you to wreck your quilt either. That's why I'm gonna show you how to do the hard work on paper because it's easy to grab another sheet of paper, right? It's a lot harder to make a new quilt top or have to unpick or like, oh, heaven forbid, all of the above, right? Um, hey, Lou. Hey, Christy. All right. So there are a few steps that we're going to look at together in order to walk you through this process. And the first is, what is the end use or purpose of your quilt? Fear, if you're going, uh, don't worry, I have examples for you, all right? But that's the first big question you're going to ask yourself every time you hold that quilt up, that quilt top up, and you have that moment of like, now what, right? You need to decide what, what is the purpose of this quilt? Where is it going to live? There's three key buckets that I put quilts in, all right? There's the everyday use bucket. This is the bucket where quilts are going to get wrecked. They're going to have holes in them. Okay. Like just honestly, this is where they live on the couch. This is where they're used to make forts. Your pets sleep on them. Your kids sleep on them. They might get dragged through the, you know, across the floor. You might come downstairs one day to find that your kids are camping in the backyard and they've put your quilts in a mud puddle, right? This is those quilts, the everyday use quilts. They have heavy wear and tear. It's important that they are secure. Pro tip, unless you just love hand binding, and I know some of you guys love hand binding, but these are the quilts that I would definitely machine bind. Like just, it is so much easier and more secure, okay? Um, but these are, the key thing with an everyday use quilt is creating a quilting plan that you are not too attached to, right? So part of the reason that I will custom quilt anything under the sun is because I do enough of it that I'm like, yeah, I'll just do it again. Like, I don't care. I'll just, I'll do the extravagant quilting plan on the quilt for the couch for kicks and giggles because I'm truly getting my kicks and giggles out of the process. And if it gets wrecked afterwards, I'm not that worried about it, right? But that may not be your story, right? If your quilting time is much more limited, especially for these quilts that are gonna get used and abused or to put it more nicely, loved to death, 
right? Then you need to make sure that you use a quilting plan that is going to secure the quilt to hold it together as long as possible, um, but also that you are not going to just be distraught or like yell at your kid if they spill, you know, grape juice on it or your girlfriend spills her wine or your husband spills his coffee or the dog walks on it with muddy paws, right? So generally here, I'm going to recommend like an all over kind of motif is my go to or straight lines would be another great example here. So in our life, perfect fit is like the quintessential example of the everyday use quilt. This quilt Thank God I made it in col the colors of my cats because I cannot tell you how often this quilt gets washed. And, and no one ever like lays under it cutely. It's never that quilt. Like if people want to take a nap under a quilt, that's a different quilt. <laughs> this is the quilt that I'll find like wadded up, kind of shoved under the couch with like the cat in it. And I'm like, I don't even know how you did that. You know, and there's like hair everywhere. Or I'll find the kids like eating food on it or like with it and like wiping their face on it. And I don't know what it is about this quilt, but this is that quilt in our lives, right? I quilted it with an all over design. I use square spirals. I'm so thankful I did. I very rarely do an all over design on a quilt, but this was, that was the golden decision for this quilt. And it gets beat up, loved on. And, and that's awesome. It really is awesome. And because it's, you know, a quilting plan that I did not, invest my heart, soul, and everything into, I'm like, cool, it's that quilt, right? All right, I'm going to get just a hot second in these comments real quick. Um, oh, that's a great question. Okay, so some of you are off asking really awesome questions. I'm going to have a question section in a hot second, so I'll have you ask them again in just a minute. Second, you'll have your bed quilt, right? This is a quilt that gets consistent use, but it's not going to get dragged all over the place, right? It lives on the bed. So the kids might climb on it. The pets might climb on it for like our bed quilt. Felicia does her belly up nap every day. You guys have probably seen pictures of that. I kid you not, every day, middle of my bed, belly up for like three hours in the afternoon. It's like her happy place. Um, so this is a quilt where I would recommend something more along the lines of a semi-custom quilting plan, which I'll talk more about in just a few minutes, but something that you show off a little bit, right? Because you want it to look, you want to like see your quilting on your quilt when you walk by your bed or when you wake up in the morning and like smile, right? Like I did that and it looks great. But recognize that this is still a quilt that's probably gonna ultimately end up with holes, wear and tear, needing some repairs. It's just, it's going to get loved, especially if your house is like my house with kids and cats, you know? Um, so this, you really could go anywhere on the spectrum here. Um, you could do an all over, you could do semi-custom, you could do full custom. It's going to just really be your uh, comfort zone. But again, if you know, if you're like us and you have snacks in bed, the wine or coffee may still spill. So always weigh that in there. With bed quilts, particularly, if you are working on a um, small throat space. So I have a throat space like the size of like a small highway, right? I'm very fortunate. Um, but if you're working on a more average throat space, which is gonna be like five to seven inches and you're doing a bed quilt, which is typically gonna be queen or larger, keep this simpler rather than more complicated. Save your more complicated quilting for the next section that we're gonna talk about. Only because as Sue just asked, do you ever regret your quilting plan? If you decide to do a fully custom quilting plan on a queen size quilt on a five inch throat space, it will look awesome. You can totally do it. You will probably regret it at least once in the process. Just gonna be honest, I'm just gonna be honest. So here's my bed quilt, Dart. This is a quilt pattern by Natalia Bonner. This is the Rifle Paper Company Wonderland fabric line. We have an Alice in Wonderland themed room. What can I say? Um, so this is a quilt that is slept on daily by us and the cats and the kids, but I don't wash this quilt super often, right? This quilt maybe gets washed once or twice a month uh, versus like the couch quilts that depending on how vigilant I'm being could easily get washed once a week, right? And that's more of a vigilance thing rather than a need. I chose to do a semi-custom quilting plan on this quilt. So all of the negative space, so all the cream is switchbacks. Um, the pink triangles all have half feathers in them. The blue triangles all have loops and then there's straight line quilting in the border, right? So I used four motifs. 
So it's a limited palette of motifs. They're all fairly simple motifs with the exception of the feather, right? Everything else is very basic. Um, and it makes it look really nice on the bed. It gets a lot of compliments if people like are over and like see it on our bed. But it was not like I did it on the long arm and I did it very, very quickly, right? It was not a complicated plan. Um, so again, hitting that balance. Finally, our last bucket of, per remember, we're talking about what is the end use, the purpose of your quilt, right? Um, so the last bucket would be a wall hanging or a show quilt. These things are typically smaller. Now, show quilts could be huge, but, you know, I'm putting them in this category because these are things that are not generally slept under or snuggled. They may not even be designed to actually go through the washing machine, right? These are your quilts that get the lightest wear. They are for looking and not so much for touching right? I make very few quilts like this. I like touching, just going to be honest. Um, but if there was ever a time to show off, this is the bucket to do it, right? Something that's going to get hung up on the wall where it can't get dragged in the mud, something you're going to submit to QuiltCon or Paducah or AQS or wherever. Um, this is your moment to shine. It is worth whatever time and effort it takes in order to execute that custom quilting plan. It really is. It'll look so, so good. All right. And for me, this is Lanterns of Hope. So this particular edition of Lanterns of Hope I made as part of a challenge this spring, but I quilted it very much with QuiltCon 2020 in mind. So this will be one of my entries for QuiltCon 2020. Honestly, I haven't submitted it yet. Need to get my act together. Um, fingers crossed that it gets accepted. That'd be really thrilling to me. But this quilting plan was nuts, right? Like, I mean, y'all, this was the pizza pie quilt, like the, the, pie, the pizza pan quilt. So there's crazy stuff on here. Um, because I did it at a fairly large scale, this particular plan, it's not even that it took so long. It's just that it was complicated. It took a lot of brain power to execute this quilt and a lot of like uh, commitment, all right? So now that we have talked about the buckets of our quilts, we have your everyday use quilt. This is gonna be the most used quilt, your bed quilts, and then your wall hangings or show quilts. Let's dive into those types of quilting plans that I was mentioning as we were going along, okay? So first of all, the all over motif, right? This is exactly what it sounds like. You're using just one motif. It is going all over the quilt. This can be free handed. So this could be straight line quilting or walking foot quilting. This could be a free hand, free motion quilting design. This could be a pantograph. So where you have it, um, they're stenciled if you're working on the domestic or you're on the long arm and you're using a laser to guide a specific pattern, or it could be computerized, right? There's a lot of different ways to do an all over motif. This is your most basic type of quilting. It's super popular in modern quilting. It's also super popular just in quilts that are gonna get a lot of use, right? If you enjoy being a topper and you just are more interested in getting it together and not necessarily adding another layer of design um, and you want it to be functional, especially for those everyday use quilts, this is your go-to plan, right? Now, I think what's really important here is once in a while I um, will encounter a potential student who wants to learn free motion quilting, but they're not necessarily planning on doing a lot of custom quilting. And it's that tug of war of like, is it worth learning to free motion quilt? And I would argue yes, a thousand times over, because if you only like sort of kind of learn free motion quilting, then your all over designs are largely going to be limited to straight line quilting and a meander. But you could do so many things as an all over design, right? Like you could do an all over clamshell with a ruler you could do an all over rainbow motif as free motion quilt, like as freehand free motion quilting. You could do an all over feather meander, right? This doesn't necessarily have to be super basic, but it tends to be kind of the most straightforward. It often is a little bit simpler in design. Um, and thus, you know, again, it's great for these kind of frequent use quilts, all right? Second, we have semi-custom. This is what I used on the dark quilt that's on my bed. And I mentioned that on that quilt, I used just four motifs. I typically think of semi-custom quilting as using, you know, three to five motifs. Three is kind of my sweet spot, especially with a traditional quilt. So if I'm semi-custom quilting a traditional quilt, I will pick one motif for the blocks, one motif for the sashing, and a third motif for the border. This is like the five paragraph essay of free motion quilting guys, especially if you're a traditional quilter, like this should be in your back pocket at all times. Like if you are a traditional quilter and you make a lot of blocks with sashing and a border kind of quilts, like this can be your go-to forever and you can just change up which three you use, right? You can get totally different looks, 
but it is accessible, it's user friendly. Um, you can create a quilting path that you don't have to break thread super often. Like this is a great quilting plan. This is especially a great quilting plan if you're like, I've learned a large number of motifs. Um, I'm still learning how to put them together. This is a great way to be practicing that juxtaposition of how motifs look next to each other, look next to each other without having to think about like, well, Holly Ann did that like pizza pan circle with like stuff on one side, and other stuff on the other side, like what? Right, this is much more straightforward. You can keep it a lot simpler, okay? Finally, we have the fully custom quilting. This really, like there are no limits on this, right? It could look like Lanterns of Hope. It could look like my Moda Bake Shop quilt, which Sue, I'll jump back to your question again about, do you ever regret the quilting plan? The only quilting plan that I recently remember regretting was that Moda Bake Shop quilt. I so intricately quilted that thing. It took me like a year because it just, it was painful. It was so tiny. Um, I will say though that the finished product, I'm pretty sure is worth it. Like in retrospect, I'm like, mm, yeah, still glad I did it. But it, in the weeds, it was really hard, right? Um, now this, like the two types of um, quilting plans before, it can be freehanded or computerized. You actually can computerize custom quilting and you can computerize semi-custom quilting as well, right? But typically when I'm referring to custom quilting, really when I'm referring to quilting in general, I'm talking about hand guided or freehand. So whether it's on your domestic or your long arm, that you are guiding the thing and you're essentially like drawing with your thread, right? Baptist bands without a stencil. Oh yeah, Christy, that would be so good. So, so good. All right, so now that we know what our quilt is going to do and what plan we're going to apply to it. So but let's just get real clear for a second. We not only decided the end job of our quilt and like basically what kind of plan we want. Uh, there's this there's this layer with that. And I don't want you to miss it. By deciding what type of quilting plan is best for your quilt. And just in case you missed me saying, if you want a fully custom quilt, your everyday use quilt, you go girlfriend. Like that's totally up to you. I just was making some recommendations, okay? I fully custom quilt lots of things that I shouldn't. So I'm not gonna judge, right? But, um don't miss that by selecting the type of quilting plan, the key thing you have done here is narrow down the number of motifs that you're going to use. Don't miss that, that's so important. So if you're doing an all over design, you need one motif, right? If you're semi custom quilting, you probably need three, maybe up to five, but you know, three-ish, right? If you're going to fully custom quilt something, there's a decent chance you're going to use a lot of motifs, right? And at each of those levels, the more motifs you're using, the more decisions you have to make, right? The, that's more moving parts. It's like the difference between planning a lunch date with one friend, planning a lunch date with three friends, and planning a lunch date with eight friends, right? We've all done this, right? Where it's like, I want to get lunch with Sue, I look at my calendar and I say, Sue, I am free on these days next week. How does that work for you? This would be very cool if we could do this, Sue, but Sue is in Canada, so that would be kind of complicated geographically. But anyway, um, and Sue would look at that and say, oh, well, of these three times, I'm free at this one, why don't we do that? Done. And worst case scenario, she comes back to me and says, dang, next week is nuts. How does the following week look, right? And chances are, just working one-to-one, -one, we can find a time to have lunch sometime in the next one to two weeks in a minimum number of texts, right? This is not going to be a big deal. Now, if Sue and Lydia and Christy and I want to have lunch, right, this all of a sudden gets way more complicated, right? You got three or four people going and like that's going to be 57 text messages, a glass of wine, and probably some tears later right? Like that's just how it goes. Now I'm not saying that your semi-custom quilting plan has to be that complicated. Remember what I said, blocks, sashing, borders. But the point that I'm making is that every time you add more motifs, it's just like adding more ladies to the lunch date, right? And heaven forbid you want to get the whole Sunday school class together and you need everyone to be there because honey, that just isn't going to happen. 
you're just gonna have to wait till Jesus comes back, right? Mm -hmm. So every time you add more quilting motifs in, it gets more complicated. It can totally be worth it. Just like managing to find a date for that Christmas party when basically everyone except that one person can come feels amazing, right? And you're like, I have all my favorite people in the same place, this is literally the best. Like that's how I feel about custom quilting, but it's complicated and it takes a lot more practice to feel comfortable making that quilting plan. And it takes a lot more brain power to make it, right? So just bear that in mind and, and to bring me back to a focus here and bring us back to a focus by deciding what type of quilting plan is your best fit you've narrowed down the number of motifs that you're going to need in order to achieve that goal, right? And then you can start picking things out and start playing matchy-matchy with what motifs you actually wanna use, right? Okay, so deciding on the quilting plan or deciding on the motifs, where do you start? Always start with the low-hanging fruit, right? I'm a big fan of the low-hanging fruit. Is there a portion of the quilt that is definitively telling you that it wants to be quilted a certain way, right? So is there a portion of the quilt that you look at it and you see feathers or you look at it and you see switchbacks or you look at it and you see that it's not quilted, right? So start with whatever the most obvious thing is for you, right? And as you're drawing on your paper, start there with marking it, right? And it might simply be that maybe the areas you're not going to quilt, you actually do grab a colored pencil and you color those in to make them stand out, right? Because that's what's going to happen once everything is quilted is those pieces that are not quilted will puff and really show up, right? So start first with the most obvious portion of the quilt to you. And that could be totally different to you from quilt to quilt, right? And it, it might be, especially if you're in that semi-custom or especially over in the custom range, that you look at it and you realize the difference between I'm going to respect the seam lines and I'm not, right? Are you going to quilt within the existing shapes like I did with the dark quilt and each triangle kind of had its own thing? Or are you going to do like I did with the Lanterns of Hope quilt and I completely ignored all my seams and they had no relevance whatsoever, right? That decision might be your low hanging fruit if you're over here in this custom bucket you might be deciding like, okay, well, my low hanging fruit is to decide that I'm ignoring all the seams and I'm just going to draw a thing that I'm then going to quilt on my quilt, right? Um, oh, Sue, that's such a good question. Hang tight. We're almost to the questions. Yay. Now, if you didn't already pick an area to leave unquilted, that should be your next decision. Is there a portion of this quilt that should not be quilted at all, right? And remember, this needs to be a fairly small area. So like the size of your palm or smaller kind of area because batting, shifting, et cetera, right? But if there is an area that maybe you've got flowers, let's say you're making a, let's say it's a Dresden plate quilt, right? And that you've got Dresden flowers. Maybe you decide the center of each of those flowers is not gonna be quilted. You're gonna stitch in the ditch around it and you're just gonna let those little circles pop, right? And that's part of the plan. This would be the moment to decide that, okay? And again, if there's an area you're leaving unquilted, you might consider finding some way to mark that on your drawing, like coloring it to let the color show you that area is going to pop, right? And then you'll simply go section by section for your quilt, right? So let's say that you are working on a semi-custom quilting plan and you have um, blocks with sashing, cornerstones, and then a border, right? And each of those cornerstones, you fussy cut, right? There's a little fussy cut Santa face in each of those cornerstones, right? So you might look at this quilt and go, first of all, I definitely want wishbones in the sashing. Second of all, I definitely want to leave the Santa faces unquilted because I went through all the trouble to fussy cut those little two inch squares and gosh darn if I'm going to put stitching across his nose, right? And then that would simply leave you the blocks and the border. And that's what you would do here is you would say, okay, now that I've decided kind of my low hanging fruit and this area I want to leave unquilted, what do I want to do in the blocks that would look nice with wishbones? What do I want to do in the border, right? And, and I would recommend, here's some thoughts on that. Wishbones are a fairly feminine design, right? They've got that loop and the curve to them. So for your other two designs, I would say pick one that is also fairly feminine, maybe something like a swirl, 
and pick something that is more like geometric or masculine, like a switchback. It has that straight line element to it, right? And that might be your border, right? So you might end up having a quilt where you've got swirls in the blocks, wishbones in the sashing, you're leaving your cornerstones unquilted, and then you have switchbacks in the border, right? And I love that juxtaposition. So what happens here is you have some areas that are a little more quilted than other areas. Those wishbones are probably gonna be the densest. Your cornerstones are gonna be your least quilted, obviously. You have areas that are much more kind of feminine feeling. They've got that more organic feel to them with the swirls and the wishbones. You have areas that are more geometric or masculine like the straight lines of the switchbacks, okay? And you just simply step by step as you go through the whatever elements of your quilt are left, you'll pick a motif for each. Now, don't get carried away unless you really are committed to this custom quilting thing, right? But you don't, if you have 17 different colors of half square triangles, you don't have to have a separate motif for each of those, okay? You might decide you only have two. One motif you do in the warm half square triangles, one motif you do in the cool half square triangles which would be a really neat way to do some contrast, right? Okay, let's see. Quilts, don't not doubt. Oh yes, I'm with you, Sue. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So as you're making this plan, you're gonna be filling it out on paper, okay? Now, I saw a question float by earlier about do I draw out the whole quilt or do I just draw a section? That's gonna largely depend on the quilt itself. Right, so if I have a quilt that is blocks and sashing and border, I'm probably not gonna draw out the whole quilt, right? I'm gonna draw a section of it. Um, if you go to my blog and you search on Provence, you'll see my blog about the quilting plan for on Provence, and you'll see how I drew out a block and two sashing pieces, right, to create my plan, and then that repeated all the way across the quilt, okay? Now, if I'm doing a quilt where every block is fairly different, something like Lanterns of Hope, I'm more likely to create a quilting plan based on the whole quilt. There's a, um, my 100 Days 100 Blocks quilt is over here to my left. And that has, I only made 72 blocks. So I have 72 different blocks. Um, for that one though, touching on Sue's question about teeny tiny pieces, I will probably not make a separate quilting plan for each block. If I had to take a guess right now, this is off the cuff, I've not like finalized this in my head, I would say that I would do a semi-custom quilting plan where I have one motif for the sashing, one motif for the square blocks, one motif for the rectangle blocks, and then a motif for the border. Off the cuff. Do I love the idea of custom quilting it? Yes. Have I seen people do stunning things by fully custom quilting 100 days, 100 blocks quilt? Yes. Do I think that I have the time, stamina, and deep desire to do that right now? No. I don't. <laughs> especially because I want to use this quilt. Like it's too big for me to just hang it on a wall. I really like it. I'd like to use it. So I don't think I'm going to sink the time and everything into fully custom quilting it. Okay. So, okay. Um, there, so there's a note on like the drawing process, right? Here's the questions. Okay. So if you're excited about this, hit the heart for me. Hit the love so that I know you're enjoying this and excited about it. And if you have questions, this is your moment. And I'm going to start with Sue's question that I keep bumping up against about what are the rules around tiny pieces, right? I would say the rules around tiny pieces, two jump to mind. One, do not make yourself crazy by trying to do something different in every single one of those tiny pieces. Please, for the love of Pete, like you will make yourself rip your own hair out and say bad words and drink too much wine. Just going to be honest. Yay, I love all the hearts. Oh, that makes me so happy, guys. Um, the other thing I would consider is with tiny pieces, you're often going to have bulkier seams. So in general, more intricately quilted, like this sounds counterintuitive, but for me in general, the more intricate the piecing, the more simple I'm going to keep the quilting plan. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to go for an all over motif, right? I very, very rarely do all over motifs, but I am probably going to do something more in a basic semi custom quilting range rather than going full custom because it's simply just not worth the sanity battle right of all those tiny little pieces of the time of dealing with the bulky seams right there are some exceptions to this if i'm doing um bonnie hunter's quilts are a great example of this quilting a bonnie hunter quilt i'm quite likely to use continuous curves 
So that's, you know, where you've got the little half orange peel shape that's going from corner to corner. It works really well on traditional quilts. That does mean that you're quilting every little bit, right? So you guys have seen me do this with En Provence. You've seen me do something very similar with the Good Fortune quilt that I quilted this spring. Um, but while that is kind of touching every single piece, it's still very uh, visually basic and it can go pretty quick once you get going, right? So does that make sense, Sue? Is that does that answer your question as far as tips? There's not rules per se, but those are some guidelines I tend to follow to avoid feeling totally overwhelmed. All right, did I miss any questions? I wanna make sure that I don't. Lydia, I just can't wait to see all the things that are gonna come off your long arm. It's gonna be wonderful, it's gonna be wonderful. Yes, yeah, so Rhoda brings up a great point about um, combining straight line quilting and free motion quilting. I touched briefly on this idea of contrasting motifs, right? Of ones that are more um, geometric versus ones that are more organic. And especially if you're working on your domestic, either switching over to your walking foot or using your ruler makes this so accessible. And it's a really great strategy to keep things fresh visually and you can kind of cover some ground with some straight line quilting that balances the intricateness of free motion. I love that. I'm so glad you brought that up. Absolutely. Um, yes, Lydia, frequently my quilting plan is graffiti quilt until I'm tired. So those of you who have gone through free motion quilting academy, and you've learned how to graffiti quilt with me. If I am going to do an all over design, that's probably what it's going to be is I will graffiti quilt it. I'm actually doing that on the quilt that's behind you guys right now. I stitched in the ditch. This will probably be showing up on my Instagram feed tomorrow and I'll post it in the on the page as well. But I stitched in the ditch on all the blocks. It's like a stripey kind of big star block and I'm just graffiti quilting the background, right? So that's semi-custom quilting, right? I just stitch in the ditch and I'm doing graffiti quilting, but it looks way cool, right? And it's almost as simple to execute as an all over design, but it looks way cool, right? Okay, let's see. Oh, I love continuous curves, Kathy. I'm so glad you were trying them out. For a busy border, Renee, I would, um, okay, it depends on the busyness. Two thoughts. If it's the kind of busy where you have some sort of vine thing, right, that there's already, there's some sort of floral thing happening that has some sort of pattern to it, I would strongly consider doing a feather that uses that vine or floral movement as the stem, right? And that, that is kind of adding, that's, that's, a, that's a more is more approach, right? If you wanna do something simple, you just feel like it's visually a lot. I did this with a quilt last year that the border fabric was faux piecing, right? So it was printed fabric, but it looked like little bits of calico all pieced together. And I just did basic switchbacks. I like used my ruler to make them real straight. And I did basic switchbacks all the way around. And visually for me, I love that. I feel like it's very calming. And I, I like the calming effect. I think that's a good plan. Um, Lydia, you got this. You can do this. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed that ruler work workshop, Jan. And I've had a few people ask. I am planning on doing another one probably in January. I will let you guys know when we get into January. I'll give you guys a, a few weeks heads up. But I haven't I haven't decided on the dates on that yet because I'm gonna wait till after we get Free Motion Quilting Academy open for enrollment. And then I'll, then I'll start letting you guys know, okay? All right, so I'm so excited that you guys are excited about this, but there's still one more obvious question. Before I hit that obvious question, here's a great example of a quilting plan, right? I did this for Lanterns of Hope. This was for our quilt along in August, 2018. I used a different motif for every color. There were, I think I used six colors and I quilted a different motif in every color. There you go. But the, the obvious question you may have that we have not addressed is, okay, that's awesome that then I just simply decide what motifs I want to use, but like, how do I learn about different free motion quilting motifs? And even more than that, how do I learn to quilt them, right? Because I've made reference a couple of times to your toolbox of free motion quilting motifs, and you might be going, Holly, and I don't have a toolbox. I don't know what that means, right? 
Now, what I mean by that is simply a collection of free motion quilting motifs that you have learned how to quilt, that you feel comfortable using, and that you have, you know, created samples of or practice pieces of so that you can kind of thumb through and go, oh, yeah, I haven't used Baptist fans in a while. Oh, yeah, I love ginkgo feathers, right? So how do you conquer that? That's a really great question. And that's exactly why I've created Free Motion Quilting Academy. I've created Free Motion Quilting Academy to serve this gap because high quality free motion quilting education that allows you to learn from the comfort of your own home and experience amazing results, that's really hard to come by except that I solved that problem with this class. Now, this class exists to transform you from an anxious beginner quilter who's wondering what the heck is a toolbox of free motion quilting motifs and where do I get me one and transform you into a confident intermediate quilter with a nice fat toolbox of about 30 quilting motifs. But enrollment does not open till January 2nd, okay? I'm so excited for enrollment to reopen. I hope if you're here asking this question that you're writing that date on your calendar. But in the meanwhile, I have a free resource for you. This is my top three tips for successful free motion quilting. Inside this guide, you're gonna find more information about quilting plans. You're gonna find information about posture, how to get your machine set up, how to troubleshoot your machine. And this guide exists to help you start those very beginning steps that lead to your free motion quilting journey inside Free Motion Quilting Academy. So if that's a good fit for you, you're like, I am so ready to develop a free motion quilting toolbox in 2020, go jump over to stringandstory.com forward slash FMQ Academy. You'll also find this link in the caption of this video where it's clickable, right? Um, and simply put in your name and email address, that guide will come straight to your inbox and you will be the first to know when Free Motion Quilting Academy opens so that you can take your knowledge of how to make a quilting plan and dive deeper into that and also build out a beautiful toolbox of motifs so that 2020 becomes your year to quilt with absolute confidence. Awesome, yes. <laughs> All right, let me pop us back out of this lovely slideshow. Yes, please. Hello, my dears. I'm back. This was so much fun. I so enjoy talking about quilting plans as a topic I'm really passionate about. So I'm so excited that all of you were able to join me live. And I'm excited about all of y'all who will be catching the replay as well. I'm going to do one hot slide through to make sure I haven't missed any questions and I'm not seeing any, but don't forget that if you do have questions, you know what, let me jump over real quick. I'm gonna grab the link to the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. If you are watching this in the replay and you have questions that I did not answer live, I want you to make sure that you're a member of the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. This is my free community group, and it's an awesome place that you can jump in and say, hey, I just watched that video about quilting plans, and I'm wondering about this thing, right? So you guys can click that link and go request to join. Make sure you fill out the, um, make sure you fill out the questions when, when you're asking to join the group. I hope that link came through. Yes, it did, perfect. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you found this insightful and helpful. I hope if you're joining in the um, quilt along, the finish the decade quilt along, that this is encouraging to you as you're planning out those final finishes of the year. And if you've not yet joined uh, the quilt along, I don't have a link handy, but if you go to stringandstory.com slash shop, you'll see the registration there. Guys, the prizes that I have for this finish along are out of this world. I've started hinting a little bit about them. I'll tell you more about them inside the Facebook group tomorrow, but you're definitely gonna wanna jump on board if you need a little extra motivation getting those Christmas presents done, wrapping up a few projects before the end of the year, and you want the chance to win fabulous prizes just for finishing your to-do list, right? That quilty to-do list. All right, guys, have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for joining me. And surprise, surprise, I will actually see you back here next Tuesday. And I'll let you know about the time a couple of days in advance. All right, until then, I'll see you Saturday night inside the Quilting Rockstars. I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful week quilting up a storm. Have a great night, guys.